Good evening. Lady Esther invites you to join the Screen Guild players to help celebrate a brilliant annual event. The Red Book Magazine Award for the Outstanding Picture of 1946. The Red Book selection this year, a Technicolor saga of American life. A story so great and yet so beautiful in its simplicity that it will touch a warm chord in your hearts and live in your memory forever. Lady Esther presents with pride Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's great Academy Award contender, The Yearling, based on the book by Marjorie Kinnon Rollins and starring Gregory Peck as Penny Baxter, Jane Wyman as Ori, and Claude Jarman Jr. as Jody. Penny Baxter tells our story. For a beautiful day, the kind of day makes a man glad to be alive. The sun warm and promising, the earth breathing slow and easy like. And still Ori, that's my wife, you see. Ori was raring. Jody! Jody! Where's that boy gallivanting at? I need some wood. Now, Jody wasn't exactly gallivanting. After all, the boy's just 11, and he had a mighty reasonable explanation. Some honeybees was here, Pa. And I aim to follow and find the bee tree. And, well, you shouldn't taken me to go around him. It's late mighty quick, Pa. Before you know it. Well, I was in the middle, you might say. I could feel for Horry, for the hard life she'd had with me, cutting out our little farm out of that wilderness. Fighting for every square inch of ground. Fighting for our food and for what clothes we had. Fighting just to keep alive. Sometimes losing. We'd laid three young'uns in our little burying ground. Only Jody were left. And I reckon that does something to a woman. Makes something inside her close up tight. So if it happens again, she ain't gonna let her hurt us so much. Yes, I could feel for Ori, but then I could feel for Jody, too. Pa, I seen a sight today down at the Glen. Yes, son? A mammy coon with two babies. They was the prettiest little fellas you ever seen. Coons is pretty. Them little fellas are so pretty that if I should send me one of them for a pet, I bet even Ma'd love it. Yeah, Ma ain't gonna go loving no coons. You reckon she'd rare if I was to mention it? Now, what do you reckon? Come on in and get your vittles, you two, for this pone steams off to nothing. Judy? I reckon she'd rare. Hey, hey, Pa, it's sweet tater pone, Pa. Just the way I... Jody. You might wait till your pa says a word of thanks. Yes, I'm, I'm waiting, pa. Oh, Lord, thanks again for the vittles, amen. Well, I declare, that's a mighty skimpity blessing, seems to me. Well, I always get hungry when I go logging. The Lord will know what I mean. Pa. What is it, boy? Did I tell you seen no coon today, pa? Uh, uh, yes, you told me, boy. Did I tell you she had a couple of babies? You told me that, too. I bet if Maud seen one of them little old baby coons, she'd have loved it to death. Now, Jody, we ain't gonna have no coons around here. What about a little old bear cub, then? If and I should find myself one. Or a possum. I just love a baby fox or a baby panther. Jody! But, Ma, I just gotta have me something for a pet. We got milk a plenty. Milk a plenty? They ain't extra drop from sun to sun. It could have mine. And don't tell me again it can have yours. You're spindly enough it is. How do you think we spare rations to some critter, whereas all we can do is keep our own bellies full? But I just want something all my own. Something to follow me and be mine. Some with dependence to it. Going on 12 and still wanting some kind of a play dolly. Why, your pa was doing his man's share of work time. He was your age. Now you finish your vittles and get to bed. Yes, sir. Night. Night, pa. Night, son. Seems to me you get mighty hard on a boy at times, Ori. Well, then let him tend to work. All is running off. All is wanting to drag some pesky critter into the house. Well, a boy ain't a boy too long. Leave him kick up his heels a little now. Day will come he won't even want to. Don't be afraid to love the boy, Ori. Well, let's get finished here and get some sleep. I have to start for the sinkhole early tomorrow. Got a lot of washing to do. Poor Ori, it were a mighty hard life for her. And thinking to make it up to him, me and Jody went to Volusia to do some trading. And when we got back... Hey, Ma! We're back, Ma. Only took us two days. Where's your pa? I'm here, Ori. Made the trip a whole day less than usual. 
brung some things for you. Got some money, too. Now, did I make a good trade, Ma? That makes near five dollars we got saved. And you know what that five dollars is going for, Ma? Tobacco seed. Enough tobacco seed so as we can have a fine money crop next spring. And every bit of money we get from that is going into bricks and mortar so as you can have a well right outside your door. Well, I declare. Yes. No more toting wash into a sinkhole half a mile from the house. No more toting water to wash in. Water for cooking. Or are you going to have a well and there ain't nothing going to interfere this time. Hey, Ma? Why, I just can't imagine it. Washing right on my own place. Having all the water I need right here. Not even caring if some slops over now and then. I, I declare it'll be such a blessing it won't seem... Now, I bet you ain't bought half the things I ordered. I never knowed a man yet that could be trusted to... Where's my paragoric? Where's my... Well, I declare. Some black alpaca. Now, if and that ain't just like a man... Yes, Jody. Come and pop. Throwing away money on such as this. I declare men ain't got no more sense than... How much did this cost? Just tell me how much money you wasted on such foolishness. Next time you go to Volusia, I'll... Black alpaca. Black alpaca. She's a rain, Pa. Don't she like it? She likes it, boy. And so we went along. Twasn't no easy life, but we managed somehow. Until that day when our hogs went wandering off. Jody and me was tracking them, picking up their trail through the rough scrub. I leaned down to push some pines aside, and all of a sudden the long grass come alive. Hey, Pa! Get back! Hold the dogs! Pa! He got me on the wrist, boy. There's a rattler. A big one. Pa! Don't talk. There's a deer. Pa! It's a doe. Well, you do as I tell you now. Quick. Take your knife and open up a belly. Yes, Pa. Cut out the liver and the heart. Use them for a poultice. Draw the poison out. Maybe we got a chance this way. Hurry, boy. I got him, Pa. Pa, you're slicing your wrist like that. You'll bleed to death. Well, I'd rather bleed to death than swell. I seen a man die once. <laughs> Hey, Pa, look. Pa, the doe's got a farm. I'm sorry, boy, I can't help it. Now, listen, I got to make for home. You get on to the Foresters. Get one of them to ride to the branch of Doc Wilson. It's my only chance. Can you do it, boy? I can do it, Pa. Tell one of them to ride for the Doc and one of them to take this road and pick me up in case I can't make it. And hurry, boy. You gotta hurry. You make it, Pa, you hear me? You're obliged to make it. <laughs> Well, now, a man gets an order like that, he can't take it lightly. I reckon I was just obliged to make it. Jody brung the dock all right. And all through them black hours, the boy must have stayed there, right by my bed. And when I got to feeling better... For a near thing, Pa. Yes, boy. You all right now, though. That's right. And I'm proud the way you kept your head and done what was needed. Pa, you recollect that doe you shot? I can't never forget her. Most likely she saved your life, didn't she, Pa? She saved me, that's certain. Pa, you recollect that little fawn she had? Yes, boy. Most likely it's mighty scared and lonesome, hungry. I reckon so. It might be out there yet, not knowing which way to go. Might be. Pa, we taken this mammy. It weren't no ways to blame. Well, sure, don't seem grateful to let it starve. Pa, Pa, you figure out to go out and see can I find it. And towed it here? Towed it here and raise it. Pa. Boy, you got me hemmed in. Tell your ma I said you was to go and get it. Hey, Pa. The second act of the Lady Esther Screen Guild play will follow in a moment. Now, a word from Lady Esther. Suppose I said to you, your skin would look so much lovelier if you kept it clean. You'd be shocked, wouldn't you? And yet so many fastidious women who think they give their skin good care never do get it really clean. And here's why. Every woman's skin has on it a stubborn film. 
It's caused by the natural skin oils mixed with cosmetics and dirt. You can't see or feel this stubborn film, but it's there. And ordinary cleansing fails to remove it. Day after day it clings, hides the true freshness and beauty of your skin. Day after day it encourages blackheads and blemishes. But there is one safe, sure way to get rid of this stubborn film. Smooth on my unique Lady Esther Four Purpose Face Cream and wipe it off. Immediately, and this is so important, apply Lady Esther Cream again and wipe it off. It's this second cleansing that really rids your skin of that stubborn, clogging film. And instantly you'll see the difference in your skin, the clearer, fresher, younger look. You'll find the very texture of my unique Lady Esther Cream is different, so soft, so effective. That's one reason my cream cleanses so thoroughly. Why don't you let Lady Esther Four Purpose Face Cream work its beauty wonders on your skin? And now, Lady Esther presents the second act of The Yearling, starring Jane Wyman, Gregory Peck, and Claude Jarman, Jr. And so Jody had him a pet, a little baby fawn. And he called him Flag for the little white stump of a tail he had. And for a thing to see, the boy and the little deer together. Daytime, Jody kept him close to hand. At nighttime, he took the fawn to bed with him. Till it were hard to figure, judging from the smell, which were boy and which were critter. And so it went on through the summer, through the fall and winter, boy and deer growing up together. Come spring, we got us a good stand of corn started, and that meant vittles for the winter. Yes, sir, things look mighty good. Until the rain. Six days of blinding, blowing, desperate There's no good to pick these things. They're rotted. All rotted. Our whole crop. Jody, you keep turning that corn by the fire so as all them ears get a mite of heat. I'm doing it, Pa. Flag, you best lay down and keep quiet. Looks like most of these beans is molded, Ori. Six days of rain. We just as good to quit fighting and lay down and die. Well, Job taking worse punishment. That's right. Find the good in it. And you get out of that milk, you dad ratted vomit. Mama, don't hit Flag. Don't hit him. Now that ends it. That critter gives me no peace night or day. He came in this house no time, never no more. He's just hungry, Ma. He ain't had much. Well, you lock him up in the barn, and if he gets in my way again... Leave I'll... off the both of you. Ain't it enough to have trouble pouring on you out of the sky without the family quarreling? Has a man got to die to find peace? <laughs> Ori. Ori. Listen. What's happening now? Well, it seems like. Shh. Pa! Hit stop! A dog, if it ain't. Just don't seem possible. Ma, it seems like times a body gets struck so low, ain't a power on earth can ever get him up again. It's like something dies so he don't even want to get up again. But he does. Taint much of a world left for us, Ori, but it's all we got. Let's be thankful we got any world at all. Well, there's the sun. I can't run into the woods with you today, Flag. We got us a lot of work to do. Get them new plantings in. Corn, taters, greens, and oakley. Gotta watch them pretty careful, Flag. Gotta look at these tobacco plants, too. See, when these here plants come up, we won't have to tote water from the sinkhole no more. Ma's gonna have a well right outside the door. When Pa says something, he means it, Flag. Yes, sir. Everything's gonna be just fine. <laughs> Yes, everything was fine. Till that morning, me and Ori went outside and seen what happened to the tobacco plants. And whilst we were standing there, Jody come out. Hey, Pa, you figure we can start to... 
What's the matter, Pa? Shouldn't be no need to ask if you're looking at them tobacco plants. Oh. Judy. Yes, Pa? We've been saving a long time to get enough extra to set out them tobacco seeds. Ain't we, boy? Torn flag done it, Pa. Torn flag. Torn flag, son. He's ruined half the crop. He didn't mean it, Pa. Ma, he didn't mean it. I ain't got nothing to say. I'm going in. Ma, listen, Ma. Ma, wait. She don't feel none like talking, Jody. She figured at last she was going to get that well dug. But Flag didn't mean it, Pa. No, I don't figure he done it malicious. He was just racing back and forth, and it was something to jump on. Pa, there's a good few you ain't touched, Pa. Reckon there'd still be enough to get Ma her well dug? I'm afraid not, boy. But I, I got a little idea. Yes, Pa? As soon as we've hoed the corn, what do you say we clear up that field behind the pot garden? There's a few big stumps there. But if we can get them out pretty soon, we might plant ourselves some cotton. Pa! A money crop so your ma can still get a well. Only don't you say nothing to her about it. Wouldn't want to disappoint her again. You reckon we can do it, boy? Hey, Pa, we can do it. We can do it. <laughs> Up my way! Up! Up! Up my Oh, Caesar. Oh, boy. This is the last one, Pa. Well, you figure we best dig more well. <laughs> we best get this field and cotton before we figure on that. Gee up, Caesar. Gee up. Gee up, boy. Up! Oh! Whoa. Whoa, Caesar. Pa, what's the matter, Pa? It's all right. I, I reckon I strained myself. I'd better get more. No. I'll be all right. You help me up on Caesar. I'll ride him in. Is it easier now, Pa? Is it? Oh, it feels mighty good lying down this way. Hardly feel the pain. You're obliged to take it easy for a spell. I reckon. You think you can take charge of things for a few days? I can take charge, Pa. You know what belongs to be done. Cowpeas will need horn. Up this watch of corn for cut worms. And I... You've got to keep that deer out in the field. I'll keep him out. That's fine. But you keep him out religious. Yes, sir. I'll just take charge of everything. Now, you get to sleep. You got to get back to your stream. All right, son. Night, Pa. Night, boy. Jody? Your Pa asleep? He's getting to sleep. You best get to bed, too, Ma. What's that? I say, you best... Get to bed. Well, now, Mr. Impudent Big Mouth, you just get to your room. Yes, ma'am. Some people get mighty important around here. Yes, ma'am. Night. Night. <laughs> well, where's the boy at now, Lori? Why, he's out getting you some food. He took the gun. Hey, Pa! Look it, Pa. I got some doves for your supper. I only wasted two shots. I'm taking charge, all right, ain't I, Pa? Everything's come along just fine. The corn's the best to ever seed, and... What's the matter, Pa? Well, when did you see the corn last, Judy? Yesterday. It were fine. It's prettier in each high. Your ma here says... something has added. The corn? She says nigh about the whole crop is gone. Flag ain't at it, Ma. Flag at it. And this settles it. That deer's got to go. But he won't never do it again, Ma. I'm going to punish him. I'll whip him with a stick, Pa. He ain't never whipped before, Pa, but I can do it. I'll, uh... You don't think whipping's going to help nothing, boy. Flag ain't no fall no more. He's a yearling. I'll pin him up, Pa. I'll halt him. I'll tie him by the legs to a tree. Uh... Jody, come here, close to me. Jody, you know we depend on our crops to live. Yes, sir. We can't go on having them destroyed one after the other. No, sir. And you know there ain't a way in the world to keep that wild yearling from destroying. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, boy. I can't never tell you how sorry. Take the yearling out in the woods and tie him and shoot him. I'll not do it. I'll just not. They can't make me do it. Flag, you gotta go away, Flag. You gotta go away and never come back. You grow up now. You can make up by yourself. You'll be all right. Besides, I don't... Don't care for you no more. You ain't cute like you used to be when you was little. I want you to go. You hear me? You're going to get killed you stay around here. Go on. Get out. And don't you never come back. Don't you never. Never. How am I going to 
going to sleep, Flag. How am I going to sleep without you? I didn't mean it, Flag. I didn't mean what I said. It was just a... Flag, what'd you come back for? What'd you come back for? Jody, how come you not to do what I told you? I couldn't. I just couldn't, Pa. Go to your room and shut the door. Your ma's... Flag! Ma! Ma, what you done? I didn't mean to hurt him. I can't shoot straight. You know I can't. Flag! Jody, you've got to finish him, boy. You've got to put him out in this torment. Jody, I'm sorry. You've done it on purpose. You always hated him. Jody. You do. You went back on me. I hate you. I hope you die. I hope I never see you again. I watched him while he took the gun and went to where the yearling was lying. Then I couldn't watch no more. I turned away. I heard the shot. And when I looked again, the boy was gone. Three days and nights. Just about the lowest time in my life. Me held to the house, hardly able to walk. And his maw hunting for the boy high and low, half out in the mind. And then the third night. Ori, is that you, Ori? It's me. It's Jody. What? Jody? Come close. Oh, boy, we near about give you out. You all right? I'm all right. You all right. You ain't dead nor gone. You all right. Glory be. I had to come home. Why, sure you did. I ain't meant what I said. Hating you. Why, sure you ain't. Jody, you figured I went back on you. That's why you run away. Son, there's a thing every man's got to know. Maybe you know it already. Taught only me. Taught only your yearling deer happened to be destroyed. Boy, life goes back on you. Yes, sir. I reckon. A man's heart aches seeing his young'uns face the world, knowing they got to get their insides tore out the way his was tore. I wanted to spare you as long as I could. I wanted you to frolic with your yearling. I, I know the lonesomeness be easier for you. But every man's lonesome. Oh, what's he to do then? What's he to do when he gets knocked down? Why, take it for a share and go on. I'm ashamed I run off. Oh, it's food and drink to have you home, boy. Now, you get to bed and get your rest, and I'll sit here and wait for your ma. Yes, sir. Night. Night, Pa. I'll start the corn early in the morning. Yes, boy. We'll make it, Pa. We'll make out. Yes, boy. Night. Good night, my son. Ethry. Ori. You were standing there, you heard him. <laughs> Ethry, he's come back. <laughs> Ori. Ori. I thought he'd gone. I thought I'd lost them all. But he's come back. He's come back. Yes. But he's done come back different. He's taken to punishment. Ori, our little boy, ain't a yearling no longer. Ma. Judy. You done come back. Yes, Ma. I'm grateful. Thank you, Gregory Peck, Jane Wyman, and Claude German for your deeply moving performances. And that brings us quite fittingly to... The Red Book Magazine Awards for 1946. As you all know, Red Book Magazine makes an annual award, a beautiful silver cup for the picture it considers the outstanding screen achievement of the year. And here is Mr. Charles Brackett, who with his partner, Mr. Billy Wilder, won the cup last year for their paramount picture, The Lost Weekend. Thank you. And speaking for Billy Wilder as well as myself, I congratulate the book on its choice. 
We both enjoyed the yearling tremendously. It is a picture of overpowering visual beauty, and it is more than that. It is a story of great people, and it is told with a warmth and tenderness and love which rarely find their way into celluloid. It gives me exceptional pleasure to pass on the Red Book Cup to the men who brought the yearling to the screen with such consummate artistry, to Mr. Sidney Franklin, the producer, and to Mr. Clarence Brown, the director. Thank you, Mr. Brackett. And though Sidney Franklin is snowbound in New Mexico tonight, I'm sure he's as happy as I am right now. Of course, we're both honored to receive an award like this, which is held in such high esteem in our profession. But I must confess there's more to it than that. This cup is not only a reward, it's a challenge. And I'm sure that Sidney and I will look at it someday and wonder if we ever again will make a picture as good as a yearling. Well, Mr. Brown, you've set yourself a very high standard. The story from Marjorie Kinnan Rawlins' book, those performances, that breathtaking photography, the lovely symphonic music, the scenes in the forest, the bear fight, the woodland ballet, none of which will be shown tonight. They all add up to make the yearling one of the great classics of the screen. We think so too, Mr. Brackett. And I'm sure that Mr. and Mrs. American audience, when they see it, will agree that it's not only the finest picture of this year but of a good many years. Well, naturally, we're proud of it. And on behalf of Sidney Franklin and myself, may I tell you now how much we owe to so many others, to Greg and Jane, little Claude Jarman, for their inspiring performances, to Paul Osborne for a magnificent screenplay, to Herbert Stothard for a glorious musical score, and, above all, to the man who, for eight years, in spite of delay and disappointment and terrific odds, never once lost faith or his enthusiasm. I mean, of course, the heart and mind of our studio, Mr. Louis B. Mayer. For him, for all of us. Our thanks to Red Book and to Lady Esther. Good night. And now, before we tell you about next week's show, here's a word from one of America's best-known beauty authorities, Lady Esther. Did you ever hear another girl say, why couldn't I have been born with a lovely skin? Well, some of the loveliest complexions in the world are largely the result of the right skin care. And much ordinary-looking skin is due to just one thing which threatens every woman. There's a stubborn film clinging to your skin, a combination of natural skin oils, cosmetics, and dirt. You can't see or feel this stubborn film, and ordinary cleansing methods fail to remove it. That's the danger. You think your skin is clean when it isn't. That invisible film still clings, hiding the true freshness and beauty of your skin, encouraging blackheads and blemishes. Here's the safe, sure way to get rid of that stubborn film. First, Smooth on my unique Lady Esther four-purpose face cream and wipe it off. Then immediately apply Lady Esther cream again and wipe it off. This second cleansing is the important one to remove that stubborn, invisible film. And instantly you see the difference. The fresher, clearer, younger look. And remember, my unique Lady Esther four-purpose face cream does four of the things your skin needs most. It cleanses thoroughly. It softens skin helps nature refine your pores, and leaves a perfect powder base. Lady Esther Face Cream needs no help from any other cream. Next week, the Lady Esther Screen Guild players will present Parent by Proxy. It will star Paulette Goddard and Jack Benny. Be sure to listen. The Yearling was produced and directed for Lady Esther by Bill Lawrence and adapted by Harry Cronman. Music on tonight's program was arranged and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. This is Truman Bradley speaking for Lady Esther. Thank you and good night. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>